How's it happening everybody? Today I'm going to show you how to make a Kydex holster using a vacuum sealer and an oven of course. Here's the things you're going to need to start with. Some good gloves because the Kydex is going to be over 300 degrees and that will hurt the damn hand. A non-contact thermometer. A pencil or some kind of rod that you can take to the top of it so that your sights don't get locked in when it seals around it. Piece of Kydex, of course. And I like to have a piece of paper that's the same size as the Kydex, and I use that to get my form right before I get to the Kydex. Alright, so first, you notice the Kydex has a shiny side and then a dull side. We're gonna put it in the oven, put the shiny side down. Shiny side on the rack. Close it. Oven's supposed to be cold or room temperature. Then turn it up to 320. And we're gonna wait probably about two minutes while we're waiting. You take your gun. This is a prop gun. And it's empty, so no worries. So what you do with a piece of paper, use that to get the basic idea of where you're going to put the kydex because once you pull it out of the oven you got to move fast you got less than a minute to get it where you want it and then put it in the bag and seal it all right so every minute you're going to go ahead and check it check each corner see it doesn't take long for it to get where it needs to be we're at 301 now all right so we're going to turn it close it back up back to this so the piece of paper is so you can get the form to where you want it because once you pull the Kydex out you're going to have less than a minute to get it formed and set where you want and I like to do them like this make sure wherever you're doing is going to cover the whole trigger guard not just part of it you don't want this or this you want the whole thing covered and I like to do mine this way I've done my first few like this but it actually is way easier to do your clips and your wing when you do it like this. So that's how I'm going to put the Kydex on. I'm going to put this right on the center, top of the slide. And then get the tape so it's as tight as it can be. So you have that nice groove. Get it nice and centered. And it's probably ready now. It's been in there for about three or four minutes. Check it again. 312, we'll look at the 315. Go ahead and get your gloves on. Make sure they have a thick, thick bottom palm, whatever you want to call it, finger and palm. So we're going to pull it out, shiny side up, like you have it on your paper. Cover on the trigger guard, everything here is nice and tight. You can still adjust it a little bit. Alright. Then you can set it somewhere where that's going to be pushing up on a little. So it'll have a nice curve to it. And then you're just going to leave it for about 15 minutes. So we'll be back in 15 minutes. Take the next steps. <clears throat> Alright. So it's been about 15, 20 minutes. Still just barely 
Well, at room temperature, that's fine. This one. Now, if you're going to use a jigsaw, make sure you have a really long blade. The standard blades are only about this long, and sometimes they'll get in between it and start knocking the hell out of the kydex instead of cutting it. Glass is all I'm going to cut. Just don't want to have any corners like this because they're going to be pressing into your skin or pressing out on your shirt. <clears throat> no, it's not very concealed. All right, so that's your basic shape we're going to want. So we've got that curve right here. Put some uh, Chicago strings right there. So you can put it on to see where you're gonna want your hooks, your jig hooks. Probably gonna want it right here. That wouldn't be where your holes go. Your holes go way below it. See. So if we want it right here. Yeah, that's probably good. And then however you want your can. I like mine straight. Some people do that, some people do that. Straight works good for me for some reason, but that's what we're gonna do here. Mark whichever holes you want. There's five and two. Just get two of them. This bit and then the next one up is way too big of a hole. That bit's way too small. Not way too small, but just barely too small. Alright, so now we get our studs. Usually we sent these in a separate bag. Look at that. Got one of each. So it looks like we don't need the rubber space in here. Maybe we do. <laughs> oh, by the way, this is the stud. This is the screw. Alright, that might be too tight, so before you keep going, check it. Oh, that's good. Now it doesn't fall out. This is called the wing. Right now, for your wing, you're gonna want it so it's about in line with where your belt's gonna be going. Which looks like it's gonna be about, yeah, about right there. Make sure it's the same, whatever. <laughs> in line with the belt loop. I 
going through both pieces makes it too tight, you just do it like this. Put it so you're only going through one. Because the codex needs to be able to open and close. Sometimes it'll work though. You, you could put another hook here probably if you wanted, or even here if you put another spacer. Like I've got some of these thick spacers. Somewhere. But I'm not sure that's necessary. It's not that heavy, but I don't know. The real one might be heavier, especially when it's loaded. If it is, you would just take these spacers, get a longer screw than that. And the wing comes with these spacers. So you would put that there on top of the wing, but under the hook so it would come out right. And that's how you do it. We're gonna cut this and clean that a little bit and hit it with the file or a sand sander if you want. But that's basically it. And there you have it. Nice inside the waistband appendix carry. I don't think this is way too big for me. Gonna have to be a bit bigger 